Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration. I hope you'll stick around, see who inspired me this week, and go see how you can find out how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Today's video is kind of bittersweet. I do get to team up with another fabulous creator for an Inspired Saturdays collaboration but this is my final Inspired Saturday. Now, it's not to say that I will not be inspired by other creators, but it's the last official one. I have loved this series. I have loved introducing you all to maybe new creators, but unfortunately, nobody else is applying to join me. You can watch all of the past videos in the playlist I have linked below. I know if you haven't watched those already that you're gonna find some fabulous new creators to follow. Today, I'm going to be inspired by Katie Weeks. Recently, she shared a video where she made five quick and easy cards using different colored inks. I'm going to be taking inspiration from the very first one she shared, which was a bokeh effect. I do have a picture of it up here on screen now. I have never tried this before, but I have wanted to, so I thought this would be a great opportunity, and her little tutorial made it seem very easy. Don't forget when you're done watching my video today to go over to Katie's channel and see how I have inspired her. I know that I'm excited to find out right along with you. In front of me are the main products that I'm going to use today. We will go over those, but as I start the voiceover, if I add in any other products or tools, I will let you know. If I do leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my color ink, I will be using some Distress Oxides. I chose Peacock Feathers, Wilted Violet, and Spice Marmalade. Now these might normally kind of make a muddy brown together, but it didn't look like you really blend them. You just kind of mix them on the page and get them close. So I'm hoping that it will turn out. For my white circles or the bokeh effect, I got out this Close to My Heart white daisy ink pad. I have had this for probably 10 years and it is still working. I will be sponging my colors onto my cardstock with these little yellow sponges here. I cut those up in six I think was the whole thing and then put some binder clips on the top. I'm using the sponges because I didn't think that blending brushes would work for this but let me know below if you've tried it with blending brushes and it did. To get my bokeh effect, I created my own stencil with some thick frosted plastic. I try to look at the one that Katie had created and mimic it on my own. And for my sentiment, I chose this set by Elizabeth Craft Designs. I wanted a nice big bold sentiment that would stand out from that background that I'm going to create. I'm not sure yet which one I'm going to use, but I know it is this set. Let's get crafty! I will be doing my ink blending on a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth. I pre-cut this piece to four and a quarter by five and a half, and then I started with the orange. Now I'm not really sure of what technique I was supposed to use here. I kind of dabbed on the ink pad and then just rubbed it over the surface of the cardstock. I continued this same process with all three of the inks and I just tried to put them in a triangle pattern to each other and fill in all of the white spaces. Since I do still have some ink blending to do and not really any talking, I do want to give you a heads up that this card didn't quite go like I thought it would. So I hope that you'll keep watching to just see how I decided to make it work. This was my first try, so I shouldn't expect to be the perfect bokeh artist. Now that my background was all colorful, I could go ahead and do the bokeh technique. I did let this dry for probably 10 minutes off camera and I used my heat tool on it to where 
a point I thought it would be dry, but you'll notice here as I start sponging on that white ink that my sponge is bringing color back over to my ink pad. So I decide, you know what, I'll bring in a paper towel, see if I can wipe that off, but it didn't really get any better. So I decided that I would try something different. So off camera, I got out some fingertip sponge daubers and I just tried like the tapping up and down motion to see if that would be any better for ink transfer. And it wasn't perfect, but I did think that it was gonna work a little bit better. So that's how I continued these cards. Instead of rubbing the ink around in the area, I kind of tapped it and I tried to make sure that I was mixing up the color so you just didn't see the dots where I tapped it. Once all three circles were filled in, I moved my piece of cardstock and my stencil around and lined up the circles in a different spot. And then I did the same thing for the three circles again. And then to fill in the open areas around the edge, I just chose a circle and just inked that single one up. Once I did get a good pattern that I liked with the white ink, I set this aside to dry for about 30 minutes. Um, but you'll see here in a little bit, it still wasn't quite dry, even after I hit it with the heat gun again. If you know any secrets, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe this is something I have to do over a couple days. Once I thought the piece was dry, I brought in all of my goodies to do my stamping with. I figured that I would probably have to stamp the sentiment a few times, so I did bring in my Misty. I'll be using the Dream Big sentiment from the stamp set with some VersaFine Onyx Black. I'm just going to place this in the lower right hand corner of my Misty, so even if it does wiggle a little bit, I can just put it right back there to keep stamping. And I got my stamp lined up in the lower left hand corner, just trying to leave an even border on the left and bottom. When I picked the stamp up with the door of my Misty, I noticed that it had picked up some of the ink from the card. So I cleaned that off before I inked it up with the black ink and then stamped it. Now you'll see here that there are some more white areas of the stamp, but overall I think it did a pretty good job. So I just kept inking it up and stamping until the black was as solid as I thought it was going to be. I probably ended up stamping it four or five times. I knew that I wanted there to be a border around my colorful piece, so I brought in my trimmer and I cut this down to four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall, and I did that from the lower left hand corner. I wanted the stamp to have the same borders at the end, so I didn't cut any off the left or bottom. Off camera, I cut a piece of white cardstock and I cut and folded a black top fold card base. I placed the white inside not only for the personal message, but also the black cardstock is pretty flimsy, so that helps support it a little bit. Then I added adhesive to the back of my sponged piece, and you'll see there that it's still wet. It's still got ink on my desktop. And because it was still wet, when I was moving it around for the adhesive, I smeared some black ink from the sentiment onto one of those white circles. So I tried to wipe that off as best as I could with a little paper towel, and then I brought back in my stencil and my dauber and just tried to add some extra white there. Here are some final looks at the card, and while I can say it didn't go exactly as I planned, it is really growing on me. Now that I'm doing the voiceover, it's been sitting up on the shelf for a little bit, and I think it's a fun card. I def think you should definitely give it a try. I hope you enjoyed my little video today and seeing how I made it work even though I wasn't sure what I was doing. I had a fun time getting inky creating this card and I hope that you enjoyed it as well. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit Katie's video. It is linked at the very top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. 
I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.